Hey, it's me again. I've got a lot of good ones in here tonight, so I'm having some fun with this. There's another thing that you see when you work with a lot of brass instruments. You see a trumpet that's hit the floor. This bell is nice and flat. It has met with a drop of some sort, maybe even a throw, we're not sure. We're not here to judge, we're not here to point blame, we're just here to correct things. And so I'm going to go about the process to correct this bell. Now before you jump down my throat about um, the way I do this, this is an instrument that belongs to a junior high school. Um, if I was going to go through with these repairs for a professional instrument, there would be so many more steps to this that we're not getting into that it's not even funny. We'd have to probably strip lacquer, uh, polish, and spray, and, and just do a multitude of different things. Um, in, in, in this scenario, the school district is, is not interested in cosmetics. We are interested in getting the instrument back into shape. And so that's what I'm going to do today. So if there's any uh, professional level techs out there that see this and you feel the need to pull my hair, guess what? I don't have very much left. You've gotten it all. Uh, this is what we do. This is what we do here. This is my bread and butter. Uh, so first of all, I have this tool here. This is from a company called Ferries in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. This is a universal trumpet mandrel. This thing uh, has saved me and done, uh, it's done a lot of good in my career so far. It fits snugly in a mounted vise. And it's just going to sit right here on top like that. I'm going to put my instrument on there and you'll see that there are gaps between this rim and the tool and I'm simply going to fill the gaps. So I'm going to just tap this down. When I'm tapping, I'm trying to use a, a nice easy motion. I'm letting the hammer fall with just a little bit of extra force. Um, if you do this and you do it wrong, you will most definitely flatten this bell rim and you will not come back from that. So don't do that. If this is something that you're interested in doing, I also recommend that you get some junk trumpets and try these repairs on those first. Um, I am making this look fairly easy because I have about a decade's worth of experience. Uh, I still have a long way to go. I don't think most technicians get to be uh, like a full level master tech for 15, 20 years sometimes. So if you're not ready to do this professionally, please do not try it. Uh, if you try it with your own instrument, be ready to have to pay a, a real licensed technician a lot of money to reverse it because there are many, many easy ways to make giant mistakes that are really costly. And once I get that tapped down to the point where it meets everything, um, you'll notice that I still have some flat spots on there that I have to take care of. The outer part is more or less okay, but now we're going to get into the inner bits. For that, I'm going to switch tools, and I'm going to go with this guy. This is what we call a fast eddy roller. It's, a, it's a, just a, a steel mandrel, we call it, and uh, this is just set on some bearings, so it rolls nice and smooth. Uh, if I was going to do this with a professional level trumpet, I would probably use some grease as a barrier and the rag and a whole bunch of mess. But this is a junior high instrument, so I'm just going to put metal to metal and I'm going to push it back into shape. You always want to attack the high spots first. A little stubborn. Some bells are more stubborn than others. These Jupiter instruments are usually on the thinner side. Uh, thinner means easier to dent, but also more malleable to remove dents. 
Uh, some of the other models are thicker and stronger. Uh, once you get up into like a Bach or a Yamaha, this can get a lot more difficult. It'll be a bit more time consuming. Getting closer. Um, it's got a fairly good scar on it. Lacquer's definitely been stretched out. There's another tool that you can get that's called the dent machine. And that tool is great because uh, it's, it's a bit more precise for doing this. I don't have one. Um, it also takes up a huge amount of room in your shop, which I just don't have. Uh, so if I wanted to do full professional repairs on this kind of stuff, I would definitely need that tool if I was trying to do full restorations. But if I was trying to do full restorations, I would also need uh, a giant boiling vat of sodium cyanide and uh, a giant plating dip that could fit like a whole trombone or even a tuba in. I don't have those things. I don't have room for those things. Uh, I have folks that I can outsource for that sort of work. And so I don't do that stuff in-house. I'm not too worried about it. And in all honesty, I've been here for 10 years too, and it's never really come up. And the only thing that I've had to outsource for plating were some of these valve caps. Uh, I had a customer who wanted them uh, gold plated, and so I have a guy back in was uh, back in Wisconsin that I have to take care of that. He does it really reasonably. Gold plate, silver plate, whatever you want. And that kind of stuff is just best left to the professionals because if you're going to plate things. You have to use so many dark and dirty chemicals, and if you do anything wrong, you're just going to have to do it again. It's best to let somebody who does that for a living do it. Uh, still not quite the way I want it. I'm going to grab one other tool. Very simple thing here. It's just a granite block. You put your trumpet up on the granite. You can very easily see where the spots are. This trumpet doesn't want to stay flat. See that? It's not balanced. It may just be because this device isn't quite right. Flip it over and try again. Try that. Yeah, it's a little closer because it's actually going to stand. And so what I'm going to do with this, my chair over here, and I'm just going to move this about just a little bit, and when I see it raise up, I'm just going to lightly tap it down. There, see, now it'll stand up by itself. That's what you want. That's how you know that that is true. And so, I mean, if you look at that, you can still see that the lacquer itself has some scars where it was peeled back, and that's where your finishing would come into play. But as far as being back into shape, we've accomplished that. We're good to go, and the instrument is ready to go back to junior high and make some noise. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great night.